This weekend on the original Rochester Press Box. I'm Steve Hausman from the B Morning Coffee Club. I don't feel bad for Doug Marone at all, and I know you don't either. I feel bad for one of the guys who did not have a $4 million parachute. I'm Tariq Spence from the WDKX Wake Up Club, and yes, New York Met fans, I'm going to say exactly what you were thinking. I'm Dan Faith for the Vision High School Sports Beat. Cardell Jones, stop playing school. Go cash out on that high stock of yours. And I'm Bill Pucko, how Doug Marone overplayed his hand. Join us this weekend on the original Rochester Press Box. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us in the Rochester Press Box, the original Rochester Press Box. I'm Bill Pucko, joined by Tariq Spence, WDKX. Just Welcome back, my friend. Nice shirt. Happy to, oh, you like the shirt. <laughs> I'm just trying to hold it down for John DeTulio until he gets back. All right, you got that seat. Dan Fates from the Vision High School Sports Beat. Thank you. And Steve Hausman from the B Morning Coffee Club. Back again, Steve. Thank Happy you very guys. much. Guys, yeah, good to see you. Hey, we were, uh, you know, it wasn't so much a hiring, I think, as it was a coronation. When we had Rex Ryan being announced as the, as the new head coach of the Buffalo Bills. You get the first swing, Steve. Uh, your original reaction and, and after a week of talking about it, how you've come to think about this. I think it is a great hire, and I'll tell you why. The Bills convinced someone to actually come here. So suddenly it sure. makes the Bills relevant again. And if they can get a guy like, Buddy, uh, like Rex Ryan to come here, they can get some big name people to come here as well, whether it be more free agents. You don't look at Buffalo and go, I'm not sure about there. Maybe it's the only thing I have. I'll go there. But I think it makes the Bills relevant. Yeah, yeah I agree. It just, it's confusing because his weaknesses are what the Bills' weaknesses are right now. And his strengths are what the Bills mm -hmm. already had with Jim Schwartz. Now Schwartz is gone. And it's, I understand from the, the aspect of they went the opposite of Doug Marone. Yeah. Doug Marone rubbed players the wrong way. Not a loyal guy. And they brought in a guy that's great with the media. Players love to play for him. And so from that respect, I get it. We just have to see if he can formulate an offense. But off what you just said, mm -hmm. don't you want a guy whose strengths are the Bills' weaknesses? That's what I thought they were going to go with. I thought I didn't necessarily want an Adam Gaze, somebody that didn't have any yeah. experience. But I thought you'd go maybe more offensive-minded. And they went the complete opposite. And granted, how much responsibility and should the head coach get for an offense? And developing a quarterback. He's not working with him. That's a quarterback coach. That's an offensive coordinator. So if he can bring in Greg Roman, and hopefully those things work, I don't think that he should be held 100% responsible for the butt fumble. I, I love the press <laughs> conference. I didn't initially like Rex Ryan as a candidate, but then I started thinking about it. You know, he's going to want to stick it to his old team, the Jets. He's going to want to beat the Patriots, right. which is what you want as a Bills fan. And he's fired up. He's fresh off of making mistakes with the Jets. He's coming with the Bills. I'd be shocked if he say, makes the same mistakes. And, oh, by the way, he's fun. He's fun to listen to in press yeah. conferences. He's fun to cover. That press conference with him and Pagula, I understand why they move so fast. I think the, I think the Bills put a lot of weight into that, and I'm mm -hmm. not sure they should have. Uh, well, you know, he said himself that he's a more mature coach now than when he started with the Jets. And I liked what Terry Pagula said about how I wanted an experienced coach because these new rookie coaches always right. fail in their first year. And that's why another reason why I think it's a good hire. But I think you made a great point in the sense that, you know, where were you on New Year's Eve? You found out you're not getting your quarterback yeah. back. You found out you're going to lose your head coach. And then you were just, what are we going to do? What would the Bills normally do? Wait till everybody's mm -hmm. done. Right. Wait till everybody. Interview all the candidates. Of course, they, get, they start getting job after job. What did Terry Bukula do? They decided, you know what, we're not going to wait. We want somebody who's fiery. We want somebody mm -hmm. who's a totally different personality. Two weeks later, you have a coach, an offensive coordinator, and a new belief in And it's Bills. not someone off the trash heap. The Bills are really close at 9-7, and seven, and it seems like they kind of took and shook some stuff up. <laughs> and, and we're really going to have to see how it shakes out now. Because cause anything after this, Marone will look good. Yeah. If, if they go 8-7, oh, 79, seven, what's going to happen for Let Marone? me use your turn, though. You say trash heap. If we didn't know it was Rex Ryan and you looked at that resume with a steady decline in the team and the way it played last year, the Jets at 4-12, and 12, that's not that impressive. Well, what did he have to work with? But that's the, uh, that's the easy out. Well, what is the out then? I mean, he still had the ability. He still had it in his head. He can't be on the field other than on the sidelines. Yeah. And he but just, like Parcell says, you are your one loss record. You yeah, are yeah. what you 
He was four and twelve. Mm -hmm. You're bringing in a four and twelve guy to replace somebody who went nine and seven. But he and went, everyone seems to consider that an upgrade. He went to the AFC Championship game twice in the six years. That feels like ancient history. With a bad GM in Isaac. You are ah. who your quarterback is. Doesn't matter how good of a there coach you, go. you can be, you need a quarterback. Yeah. And just one more quick thing. I, I like Belichick is like the model. You know, he got fired yeah. in Cleveland yeah. and he got better. He 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 found religion and went to New England, all the rest of the stuff. I, I'm I'm concerned that Rex Ryan didn't wasn't given enough time to be humbled, having been let go by the Jets, uh -huh. and uh, and then just a month yeah. later he's got a new job. He's in demand. He's empowered. I don't know that he and, learns And we anything. saw at the news conference it was a love fest. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know. Gosh. Coronation. Yeah. Good point. All right. Championship Sunday is coming up. We'll look at the team's involvement. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box. Bill with Tariq, Dan, and Steve. Final Four. Uh, NFL Final Four. You know, great weekend coming up. you got two clear-cut favorites. Uh, you got anything to add that we don't know, Danny? I just don't see how there's any way that the Packers go into Seattle with Aaron Rodgers, Gimpy, and come out with a win. I just doesn't make sense to me. And the Packers can go back and look to losing to the Bills as the yeah. reason why they are not hosting home field advantage. Yeah. The Packers are a different team at Lambeau Field. We know how Aaron Rodgers plays, but you're just, I mean, the Seahawks are the Seahawks again. When they were 6-4 and four and they were, they were squandering, all of a sudden this defense has come back to life. Russell Wilson on third down is just lethal. I just don't see how Seattle's going to lose at home. I, I, I don't see how Seattle's going to lose either, although I don't think Seattle is as dynamic as they were last year. I'll give them that. They don't have a sort of special team presence that Percy Harvin gave them. Absolutely. And that was a unique dynamic with that defense and an offense mm -hmm. holding the ball and running it with Lynch. I, I, I have the same problem. I think this will definitely be etched in stone as a great win for the Packers if they can do it. One-legged Rodgers with that running game and that defense that he has to face. If they win, it'll be fun. That's why we watch the game. The other one is... Look, I can't figure him out. No running game, sketchy defense, <laughs> and he wins again. Uh, granted, against a very old and I think almost done Peyton Manning, right. I'm just I'm confused with Luck. He's doing it with smoke and mirrors. I don't know if his time runs out in Boston. I see an old uh, an old reference. I see Willis Reed and uh, Aaron Rodgers going out to Seattle this week. Yeah, uh, I think one of the road teams is going to win, and and I I think it could be the Colts. I really do. Wow. I mean, he's a uh, he won on the road last week, yep. yeah. and uh, you know he's young, he's hungry, he doesn't know any better, doesn't know any different, and why not ride the vibe? See, I think it. if it's one or the other, I think it's Rodgers. Because really? I think, I think there's something special about him, and I'm encouraged by the fact that with the leg injury and everything, that he finished stronger than he started. Yeah. If this thing was a debilitating injury, he would have finished worse than he started. And it's not going to be as cold. I'm sure it may be rainy and mm. stuff like that, but it's probably not going to be as cold as it was you know, in Green Bay, but I don't know, like I said, this, you know, we're on to Cincinnati, we're on to this, we're on to that. I mean, I think this Patriots team, they were terrified to play Baltimore. Yeah. I mean, that's the one team that they couldn't afford to play. Yeah. They had their number and they got over that hump. I think that this is, you know, this could be Brady and Belichick's maybe last run. Because sure. you, you never know how quick it can end with how mediocre Peyton Manning, how mediocre Drew Brees has looked. We, let's be honest, we want the Patriots versus the Wouldn't that be beautiful? Seattle. I mean, it, we, we want it. Will we get it in sports? You know, we have a funny thing about the BCS championship game. A funny thing happened when you had number one, number two. You didn't get that. You got a number yeah. four seed when it all. So that's what's so funny about watching this sporting. I, I, don't want, I don't want to say that anybody's got it in hand, but I will be watching these games to find out if luck can really beat the Patriots. And imagine if it was the young quarterback – drafted number one that beat the Patriots to go to Super Bowl, and his name wasn't Peyton Manning. I think the key will be, won't be necessarily luck. It'll be the uh, Colts defense getting in Tom Brady's face, frustrating him early, getting to him, and really making him have to adjust his game. But having said that, I think this is a better day of football than even football, uh, Super Bowl Sunday. This oh, is yeah. the day for football. And for people who have Monday off, yep. tomorrow off because of the holiday, stay up late, watch the uh, the second game. You know, I get up so early in the morning. Yeah, right. you, you can relate. There are no days <laughs> off for us. <laughs> Sunday night football is usually one half of a game That's for us. Right. We'll That's be able right. to stay up. So I look forward to I look forward to these two games. So do I. Yeah. Uh, Rochester Press Box. Be back with Like It or Not. Just a moment.
This segment of the Rochester Press Box is brought to you by The Distillery. Four convenient locations, The Distillery, your choice destination for Sunday brunch with great food and drink specials, plus all of the games. The Distillery, a Best of Rochester award winner, tap into good times at The Distillery. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box. Bill Pucko here with you. Rochester Press Box, our Like It or Not segment is brought to you by our friends at the Distillery, where between Sunday and Thursday after 9, you get half-price appetizers, and it's always half-price margaritas. Best well. appetizer at the, the uh, Distillery, the deep-fried green beans. Ooh. Mm. Awesome. Try, All right. Try next time. Yeah. Vote for that. Like it or not. <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> Danny, Peyton Manning at this point. Uh, I think he's... I, I don't like it. I, I think that he's on the decline, and I, I don't think that we started to see that even up at times last year. And you know, he his ball doesn't fly the same way. He doesn't have the same oomph on of it. And not only that, he's changing the offensive scheme. There's a lot more crossing patterns. He doesn't throw the ball deep anymore. It slants. Everything's within five yards. And we've seen teams kind of exploit that. Jam receivers. If you can bottle it up, he has never been mobile. Whether how much this quad was bothering him, you know, is, is there to tell. But. I think he's got maybe a year left, and that's sad to say. All right, if he was available somehow, do you take him for the Bills? Do you let him be the quarterback here for a year? No. no. I, th I think he holds back a franchise. I think he holds you back for a year. Peyton Manning and a full body cast is better than what they have right sure, now. Yeah, <laughs> this is you true. Know? But, I mean, you know, how long will he last? That's right. the concern. And I, I feel bad because we don't want good things to end. He was right. a great mm -hmm. player. He won a Super Bowl. Yes, great he guy. lost two. Great guy, funny. We're getting commercials. But this is it. It ends for all of us. Sometimes not the way we want it to. And I feel bad because I thought he could have gotten one last year in the Super Bowl. He ran into a brick wall. It happens. I just, I, I love Peyton Manning, but I know this is it. Doesn't it feel like he's playing on like borrowed time? Yeah. Like, like after the neck injury, it was like, he's yeah. done. That's he's it. never going to do we it were, again. We were counting it none. And then he had two, you know, he had the 50 touchdowns and he's back. And then it's, it, it ends. You're right. And it, you don't want to admit it. I don't want to admit it because he was the guy that I watched growing up, but. I think he's on his way out. I'll miss his commercials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. He may still be able to do the commercials, Maybe. even with a quad injury. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. Drake, like it or not, the, uh, the outcome of the College Football Championship Series. I love it. The ratings love it. Everybody else loved it. And the fact that the number one and two seeds didn't win, I love it even more. It just makes <laughs> more emphasis on that number four spot. Think of Ohio State. Almost done at the end of their regular season. They come out, they come out, they find a way to beat Wisconsin. They come into this bowl game. A lot of people felt TCU should have been in there. Other schools should have been there. And what do they do? They go out. They beat one of the baddest teams. They go out. They do it again to Oregon. It would just put up a 50 spot on Florida State. I, I, what's not the like? People have been asking for this playoff, and look, the people were right. Doesn't this validate the committee? Yeah. They got it right. Yeah. To, to put them in over the TCU, over the Baylor, they, they knew what they were doing because they got to see it with their eyes, and yeah. they got to see, man, this third-string quarterback put up 59 yeah. points against Wisconsin. I love it. Well, now, and what about the final rankings where TCU is third in the nation? How did that happen? <laughs> Why would they even bother with that? Yeah, well, yeah. That's kind of ridiculous. Hmm. You know, the one thing that I especially like, I mean, all the early talk was when this came out, it says, you've got to go to 18, so we're going to go to 18 yeah. eventually and stuff. I really found that I liked it at four, and the, and the reason being is because Ohio State having won it all, they were on the line at Penn State with a game they were into overtime, yeah. and if they lose that game at Penn State, they're not even in it. Every game is important of the way they have it set up. I love that Urban Meyer story. That thing is unbelievable. I mean, two championships at Florida now, another one in, in uh, Ohio State. And think about where Ohio State was, coming off sanctions, left alone, having a great season, losing their starting quarterback, losing their backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. And then to go in and beat a team like Oregon, it's amazing. And I'm with you, too. And like I said, how old Urban Meyer looked after he won the, the championship in 08 with Florida. Florida. He was worn down, all this stuff. He looks 10 years younger now. He and, looks great. And now he's getting a tattoo. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Stevie, like it or not, this is something you can bring into the radio the next morning. Yeah. Uh, like it or not, Kurt Bush's ex-girlfriend. Who, her name is Patricia Driscoll. Now, that Bush, we know of. Well, yes. <laughs> Bush is, a, you know, he's a guy to get involved in the spotlight. He pushes his weight around. But his ex-girlfriend is a hired killer? <laughs> I mean, this is almost too funny to be true, but he's telling, I mean, they're, they're going back and forth in court. They want to avoid each other, and they're trying to get set that up legally. But he's accused her of being a, a, a killer, a hired gun. Hired assassin. And there have been situations, apparently, he says, where she has showed up at his house with uh, uh, bloody dresses, and it, it's just unbelievable. I mean, who can believe this stuff? The best part is, is that somebody's 
bold face lying. Yeah. One person saying that they're a train killer, they would leave in camo, they'd come back. He, uh, she, he said that she's shown her pictures of people that she's shot and stuff like that. And then the other person saying, that's not me. Somebody's lying. Yeah, yeah. I, I, listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> right? As a guy who's if been you, there. If, okay, if you anymore. have a girl show up with a bloody dress on, <laughs> I mean, it was fun for a while, but it's time to wrap it up. I don't know why you... Let's put it this way. Do trans assassins show up just before a race and go on national television? I mean, I just... I'm not buying this one. She was crazy. You had fun. It's over. Just admit it. If we've all had a little crazy one in our life every once in a while. It's all good. Just... Put in the, the restraining order, you'll be fine. So it's a big thumbs up. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. Like it or not, brought to you by The Distillery. We're back with Unfinished Business after this. And you don't need to be Native American to realize it is offensive. And it's not politically correct. It's the right thing to do. He was an idiot for throwing him that pitch. The guy's phenomenal. He had no reason yeah. to give him anything, especially a fastball to hit. It's simply that these two guys, Ronaldo and Tom Brady, are too good looking. <laughs> I like it, just don't admit to it. <laughs> Everybody wants to hate on the best in the world. You know, he's here, he's here to stay, and he wants to build something big time. The bottom line is, still nobody's gonna like A-Rod. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box, Unfinished Business. Tariq. My New York Met fans, this is one's for you. Now, Terry Bergula said something very interesting. You can't be afraid to say what you have to say. You shouldn't be. For the Major League Baseball writers to be afraid to say that Mike Piazza took some performance-enhancing drug, you never said that. No one has ever thought of that. You threw it out there. You believe it because he played so well in the steroid era. Well, you have no proof of that. It's all speculation. So why are you penalizing him? Because everybody else in the class cheated. You can't do that to a player that you have no evidence of a performance-enhancing drug in his system. No test, no nothing. Speculation is the reason why he's not in. He's a first battle Hall of Famer, the greatest hitting catcher in baseball, and you're keeping him out because you think he took something. That is ridiculous. I'm sick of these sports writers and these, oh, just the purity of the game. And when I think he did it, you don't know. If you did, you should have wrote about it. You were afraid to. Now you're holding it against him. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I think they have to answer it. for this next year because he's going to get in. And the, an explanation is going to be due at that time, too. It should have been this year, if not last year. Stevie. Uh, I don't feel bad for Doug Marone. He made his bed, he's in it, and I think a lot of Bills fans are happy with what's been going on with Doug Marone. I feel bad for Jim Schwartz. Here's a guy who ended the season on an up note. Gosh, he has a defense everyone around the NFL is talking about. Marone pulls his stunt, suddenly he's gone. Uh, the worst kind of firing is a firing that comes when you don't expect it. You know, those of us in the radio business, we've seen it happen before. And here's a guy who probably thought, I'm on top of the world, I might even get a raise. And here he is now out on his can. I feel really bad for him. Guy who thought he had it made suddenly just like that. I mean, coaches come and go, but I think this is a raw deal for him. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, but and Schwartz is, you know, at least he's, he's got a resume. I mean, yeah. he's going to make out okay. There's a whole rest of that staff of his. Where, where does Neil Hackett go? Sure, sure. Where does Doug Marone go? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's really the question. Danny. Talking off that uh, the college championship, I got a message for Cardell Jones. He has to decide today, so it's unknown right now, but go to the NFL, enter the draft. And I know that's weird to say for somebody that's hoping to be a third round pick, but look, Cardell, your stock will never be higher. Before this season, you were known for a guy who tweeted he, you don't, that you don't play school and that classes are pointless. Now you are a role model for kids. You are the biggest name right now. You have won the Sugar Bowl, the Big Ten, and the National Championship. What else more do you need? You're a system quarterback. You're going to need time to develop. And right now, you're probably the third string quarterback, again, behind JT Barrett and Braxton Miller. And you're not guaranteed the starting spot. It's time to go to the NFL because you're not going to get any better playing here in this system of a spread option. Go to the NFL, fit with the team, maybe the Eagles, maybe the you know, 49ers, and there will be no pressure on you to be rushed into play. You're six foot five. You're 250, luckily because you've cut your weight down. Get a personal trainer. Have all this time to not have to worry about playing school and focus on football. Cardell Jones, your stock's high. Time to cash out. Because he has a unique skill set. 
So yeah. they get it right? If yeah, you would have the movie trailer. Yeah. Big, big is a unique skill set. If you would have watched that game not knowing anything about either team, you would have thought the pro prospect in that national championship game was Cardell Jones and not Marcus Mariota. Yeah, who's going to fall in the draft? I exactly. feel bad for him. I want to finish it up playing off of uh, what Stevie was saying about Doug Marone. I think if he's taught us anything, is that you cannot manipulate the game of musical chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Marone left everybody in his wake hurting. I mean, he walked out on the Buffalo Bills. He screwed over ownership. He screwed over management there. And as Steve accurately pointed out, worked over Jim Schwartz is not out of a job. And his entire staff is gone. The only good part about this entire story is that as of now, and it doesn't appear as though it's going to change, Doug Marone himself has no job. He's got $4 million in everything, but he walked away from it thinking he could manipulate this game of musical chairs as far as NFL coaches go, and it hasn't come up with his name. He apparently interviewed bad with the Jets, and his name isn't first on anybody else's list. If he's taught us anything, and if he represents anything, it's a classic case of a guy who overplayed his hand. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Tariq, Danny. Pleasure. Stevie, as always. Anytime. And thank you for joining us on the original Rochester Press Box. We'll see you next week.